What I'm going to show you is another quick way to create a radial bar chart in Illustrator and keeping all of the data live. Now, quick warning, this one is a little bit fiddly to get set up, but once you have it set up, it's just super flexible. OK, so what I'm going to do is tap J on my keyboard to start off with, which will get me the bar graph tool. Now, I don't need to worry too much about that. At the moment, I'm going to head towards the center of my artboard going to hold down Option and Shift or Alt and Shift on Windows and draw out the area for my chart. Now, I don't need to worry, as I said, about it being a bar chart just at the moment. I can go to the Graph Type menu and change that to a pie like so. OK, so let's enter some values in here. So I'm going to enter 90 in the first field there and 10 in the next field. Then I'm going to move down to the next row. And we'll do 75 there and 25 there and down one more row. We'll do 60 and 40 just there. So they all add up to 100 and we'll hit the tick like so. And this is what we get. We get three charts like so. Now, just to show you, if you'd enter the data differently, if I transpose the data and reapply it, this is what you get. You get two pie charts with three sets of data in each. Let me transpose that again and hit the tick. I can now also close that window. And do you know what? While we're in this particular state, we can just do a little bit more housekeeping. So first of all, I'm going to remove the stroke from all of the charts just there. So no strokes, that will just spoil the effect. And then I'm going to get my group selection tool OK, so if you long press on the direct selection tool, you'll find that just there. And I'm going to click and shift click on all three gray wedges. And then I'm going to make sure they have a fill of none. Also, as far as Illustrator is concerned, they are still there, but they just do not have an appearance. Let's go ahead then and add some more colors. So I'm going to choose some of these wedges like so. So this one here, I don't know, I think I'll make that maybe sort of a greenish color like so. And then we'll go ahead and add another color on the edge here. And let's make something nice and bright on the outside. There we go. I think that's going to work pretty well. Now I'm going to switch back to the main selection tool and click on any one of the pies and it will select the entire chart object. We'll go back now to the graph type menu. OK, so here I'm launching that from the properties panel. And what I'm going to change here is I'm going to change the position to stacked. OK, I'm also going to make sure that sort none is the option just there. And when I hit OK, you can see they now stack on top of each other. Visually, this is what you'd see. And if you're fine with everything joining up like that, then maybe you could run with this. But personally, I want these to be in nice separate bars. And this is where the fiddly bit comes in. I'm going to zoom in just a bit here to make it easier for you to see. And then I'm going to hit the backslash key on my keyboard to get the line tool. I'm going to go to the center of the chart, start drawing, hold down shift, and take this right the way out to the edge of the chart like so. Perfect. Now, if you want to give that a color just temporarily while you're looking at it here, then go ahead and do that. So this has two points, one on either end. I'm going to use a command in the object menu. I'm going to come down to path and choose add anchor points, and it will add an anchor point between any pair of points. So now we have an anchor point in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. So object path add anchor points. And you'll now see that we have another one here. OK, and another one here. And I'm going to do that one more time. So object path add anchor points. And then we have some points right in the middle of each of those wedges. Now, you can just work with this line, but what I tend to do to make my life even easier is still with the line tool selected, I go to the first of the anchors that I want, hold down the Alt or Option key, 
and click and drag upwards to create a perpendicular line like so. I'll then go across to the next anchor. So there's one here, but I want the one in the middle of this line, as it were. Option key down, click and drag upwards again like so. It doesn't matter if they're not exactly the same height. And then just one more time, okay, over here. Do that because it gives us a nice, easy target to work with. Then we can go ahead and switch to the selection tool and delete, okay, that line. All right, we are halfway there, at least maybe just a bit more beyond. So we'll tap L on the keyboard to get the ellipse tool. We'll move to the center of the chart, hold down the option key and the shift key and click and draw outwards like so until you meet that first path there like that. Then deselect everything. So shift command A, shift control A, return to the center and option shift drag outwards like so to draw another circle and then repeat that just one more time to get the three circles that we need. There we go, drawn out to the path like so. And then we can switch to the main selection tool and just select the three lines here because they've done their job. We can delete them, then select the three circles that we just drew and increase their stroke weight to the width we would like our bars to be. So I'm gonna go with something like this. I think we're sort of half the gap as it were between each one. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and go to the object menu, come down to path and choose outline stroke. Okay, so what has happened here is it's created three compound paths. And I know that at the top here, it says compound path, but there are actually three. If I just go ahead and just grab one just for a second, you can see that there is just one and there's another one here and another one here. I'm going to select all three of those and then turn those into one big compound path. Quickest way to do that is Command-8, Control-8 on Windows, and now they are one path. Select the chart and the compound path that you've just made and turn that path into a clipping object. So Command-7, hey, Control-7, and now you can see that your paths here okay, are clipped inside of that. And visually, this is what you get. The main question I get at this particular point is, yeah, but how do I change the data? Because it's really difficult to select on the artboard. And the answer is, don't select it on the artboard. Go to the Layers panel, twirl open the Disclosure Triangle, and twirl open the Disclosure Triangle for the Clip Group. And I can just drag this out a bit more so you can see that compound clipping path there. And then select the chart, and then you can edit the data. Now, unfortunately, it isn't appearing at the moment in the Quick Actions area, but I can just go down to the Object menu, go to Graph, and choose Data from there, and then make whatever changes I want. So let's just say this one here is going to be 80-20. There, like so. Hit Return or the check mark, and you can see how that's adjusted. And it will adjust as many times as you want. You can still get the group selection tool to target different parts of the chart. You can see here that I'm actually selecting the chart just there. So I'll go ahead and change the color of this one, make it nice and bright orange. There we are, perfect. That's how you can create a radial bar chart in Illustrator, keeping the data live.